as Western foreign policy objectives by the neoconservatives hang in the balance right now inside of Syria and North Korea, leaving the world on edge, I wanted to talk about something that is threatening U.S. NATO militarization and also U.S. hegemony and dominance in the world. A very existential threat, a formidable threat that is also organizing militarily. Now, for a number of years now, we have been hearing that the world is on the brink of World War III, especially with U.S. NATO interventionism and military conflicts inside of the Middle East. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists even a few weeks ago said that the world is closer to nuclear war than it has been since the height of the Cold War. Even the former president of Russia, Mikhail Gorbachev, said this year that it looks like as if the world is preparing for war. And he's not that far off, especially with what we have been seeing all around the world. And in today's geopolitical landscape, if there ever was a world war, it would play out between the United States and NATO versus the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Now, it's an alliance of Eurasian Balkan states that have come together not only economically and politically but also militarily. The original Shanghai Cooperation Organization started in 1996 as a way for China and Russia to have better relations with the stand countries in the Eurasian continent. And already this alliance has 25% of the world's population and it rebranded and signed its charter in June of 2002 between China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. They did this on the heels of the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan, an occupation that still continues to this day. And with the United States and NATO having its biggest military buildup since the Cold War, starting military interventions inside of Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, and now Syria, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization seems like a direct result and response to U.S. NATO interventionalism. And as we know, the conflict currently going underway right now in Syria is a proxy war since both China and Russia have aligned themselves with the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, while the United States attacks them militarily and sees them as an enemy, continuing the actions of his predecessor, Barack Obama, who previously tried to intervene in the Syrian conflict but failed to do so, which of course the Shanghai Cooperation Organization opposed. Now with Donald Trump becoming president, he has set his eyes on Iran, continuing the same aggressive neoconservative action plans that were carried out before him, seeing Iran as a threat, not only imposing travel restrictions and sanctions on that country, but also labeling them the number one sponsor of terrorism in the world. And as the potential of conflict between the United States and Iran escalates, especially in the surrounding waters with American warships facing off against Iranian warships. We find out that just a few days ago that Russia supports Iran to enter the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. With the Shanghai Cooperation Organization already being a major counterweight to NATO, an Iranian membership would have grave consequences for U.S. foreign policy. Now, the only reason Iran is not a part of the SEO, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, is because of the U.N. sanctions that the United States put on that country. But according to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, he said just a few days ago, quote, next in line for, quote, membership is Iran, which has resolved issues related to sanctions from the UN Security Council and said, quote, fully meets the criteria for membership. Now, if Iran is able to join the SEO, this is going to have global impacts and global ramifications that, of course, won't work in the U.S. globalist interests. Even Turkey, a U.S. NATO ally, is looking into joining the SEO and potentially snubbing the U.S. and Europe, which could explain the recent unexplainable foreign policy moves that Donald Trump has been making with the Turkish government, giving them intel and information on attacking Kurdish rebels inside of Syria, aligning himself closer to Turkey, meanwhile creating more of a chaotic situation inside of Syria with no end in sight. Now, even India and Pakistan, who are two countries who hate each other, are also going to become members of this new SCO alliance in June of this year. And with all of these countries on board, countering U.S. and NATO aggressive actions in the world, this is definitely one formidable threat. Now, we have to understand, it's also in China's interest in order to have Iran a part of the SEO, since China's energy security is dependent on Iran, and the two countries have a very strong economic relationship and see it as a national security issue to make sure that the U.S. and NATO don't launch a war against that country. China, of course, has very strong economic interest in the SEO, as China and Russia are both fighting against the U.S petrodollar and U.S. hegemony by establishing a gold-backed trading standard, which threatens the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. And just like China sees this as a major economic alliance, Russia sees this as a major military alliance, especially since U.S. NATO troops and military bases are positioned all around Russia's border and are continuing to anger the Russians with military drills, preparing for a full-scale war with that country. The SEO has already conducted their largest ever military drill and are cooperating militarily 
together, and not only publicly objecting to U.S. NATO interventionism all over the world, but also questioning the need for U.S. bases all around the world. And with all of this happening, we are seeing the battle lines drawn and alliances being made against two very strong forces in the world that show no signs of backing down that, of course, could lead to a conflict that could threaten the very existence of humanity. Now, for more geopolitical news and foreign policy news, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and, of course, support us on patreon.com forward slash we are change because in today's day and age if you really want to get the news you have to support it with your dollar we're not beholden to any corporation or government or globalist buttholes there is no agenda here other than to tell you the truth and if you think we did consider donating at least five dollars a month to make sure we could continue and sustain our independent news operation